Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorials on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. In the previous tutorial, we briefly looked at uh, what units are and uh, why they can be good for image segmentation. And in this tutorial, let's go ahead and start coding or putting together the unit model in Python using the Keras uh, API that's part of TensorFlow. So let's jump in. And here is my spider IDE. So let's uh, start by importing the relevant libraries, okay? And again, the model are, that we are trying to put together is ex looks like this, okay? Where our input image is 128 by 128 by 3 and followed by two convolutional uh, uh, layers and then uh, a max pooling layer and so on. Okay, so let's do this systematically, starting with defining our inputs. So first thing first, let's import the right libraries. And I think for now, let's just do TensorFlow, okay? Import TensorFlow as TF. So we don't have to type the long name. Now, uh, in fact, I could have imported Keras from TensorFlow, but let's let's uh, uh, let's stick with this now first let's uh, define our image dimensions let's say our image width equals to we said 128 by 128 so let's uh, quickly verify that image width is 128 height is 128 the number of channels in the image is 3 which is a color makes it a color image so i'm going to just say image uh, height h e i g equals to 128 and our number of channels equals to three okay so now that that's done let's actually start building our unit model okay so let's just say build the model right now so first of all what is my input layer okay let's call my inputs equals to and i'm going to use the layers module in keras okay that actually contains various layers that are that we're going to use in deep learning it, including convolutional uh, max pooling recurrent normalization whatever you would like to use the uh, keras layers uh, uh, you know contains uh, the layers module in keras actually contains all of these tools so the way we do this is tf.keras okay tensorflow.keras within that we have layers okay and the one we want is conv 2D, okay, 2D. And what are the dimensions? First of all, so for our convolutional layer, uh, in fact, sorry, let's not start right there. Please erase that. We are actually defining the input layer. I'm not defining the conv layer. That's why it's important to have a graphic like this in front of your face so you know, okay, input layer and then conv 2D. Sorry about that. Again, same procedure, tensorflow.keras.layers, okay? Within layers, we are going to use input, okay? And our input is uh, the first uh, dimension, image height, and then image width, and then image uh, number of channels. That's pretty much it. So I'm going to just uh, copy this. Image width would be the first one, and image height would be the second one. And finally, the number of channels, image channels, okay? So number of channels. So now that I've defined my input layer, I'm all set to work with uh, uh, the actual convolutional layers, okay? So the way we define our convolutional layers is uh, C1 equal to, because I'm defining it as C1, because that's our first convolutional layer right there, okay? I, I'm going to use the same convention that I used here, C1 and then P1, and followed by C2, P2, C3, P3, and so on. So 128, 128, 16, so these two each is 16 right there. And my uh, uh, the kernel size is 3 by 3. So let's uh, do tf.keras layers, and now comes the con 2D, okay? convolutional and again what is the dim uh, feature dimension 16 and i'm going to use 3 by 3 kernel and my activation that i'm going to use is relu again if you wonder what activation is please look at one of my previous videos where i talk about relu elu and so on okay so let's do that and let me create a bit of extra space and a kernel initializer 
Okay, so uh, let me. Uh, I was thinking about whether I should talk about uh, kernel initializer, but le well, why not? Let's go ahead and uh, spend a minute talking about initializer. So first, let me write down what I mean. Kernel initializer, okay, equals. Uh, let's use uh, he normal, which is what I use most of the time. He normal. Now, what the heck do I mean by this uh, kernel initializer? Well you have to start with some weights, right? So this entire deep learning is nothing but the neural network is trying to update the weights, okay? Uh, and, and where does it actually get the starting weights? That's what this initializer basically means. So before, I mean, it needs to have a starting, you know, uh, value. So iteratively, it can update them to get these values better. So kernel initializer is just this, uh, this nice term that defines uh, the initial values and uh, there are many options for kernel initializer one option I remember is uh, where you can use statistical normal di distribution okay a normal distribution uh, and you can use those for initializing the weights uh, for initializing the weights okay uh, and and there are other functions like he uh, normal as the name suggests like it has to do with normal distribution except it is a uh, truncated normal distribution which is centered around zero okay again normal distribution by which i mean gaussian distribution right so it gets a gaussian distribution it truncates it it's around uh, it's centered around zero but then it doesn't go all the way uh, far like uh, regular normal distribution Again, if it's confusing, don't worry about it. You can use he normal. You can use uh, uh, a few others, like uh, I believe one of those uh, I used in the past, uh, orthogonal, I think, is another one. Identity, you can also use uh, 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 truncated normal is another one. It sounds like he normal, but it's, it's slightly different, and you have the regular random normal distribution that you can also use. So there are various ways to initialize this. And again, it depends on what you're trying to do. So please go ahead and look at the documentation for kernel initializer. OK. Uh, well, anyway, sorry for spending all that uh, extra time talking about this one thing. But I hope it does make some difference you know, <laughs> in your understanding of, uh, uh, of this uh, kernel initializer. So what else uh, do we provide? So let's also provide, because uh, here we said our padding equals to same, which means we want our output image to be the same dimensions as the input image. So go ahead and pad the image uh, uh, to yield you know, the same dimensions after it's done. So again, it's just done by saying padding equals to same. That's it. OK, so for now, let's keep these uh, parameters. And now we have to say on what are we applying this. So this would be on inputs, right? So the inputs actually go in here. And uh, does it do anything if I run this? Uh, it's let's see. Let's go ahead and run the code and see what it says. Oh yeah, uh, it didn't show anything because we are not uh, we are not uh, you know uh, summarizing this. So that's okay. I mean, at least it didn't throw any errors. I thought it would actually throw errors. I think it would uh, later on if I continue with this code because this uh, for whatever reason. Uh, well, there's a good reason. Uh, this uh, 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 this entire path, like uh, the layers, actually take in only a floating point values as inputs. Of course, uh, the weights are all floating point because the weights are uh, values between zero and one. Think of them as probabilities. Okay, so by multiplying the input pixel values by those makes it uh, a floating point value anyway. But then I'm pretty sure this will yell at us if we don't convert the input pixel values from 8-bit uh, to uh, to a floating point, OK? So we have to change the integer values that our image actually has into floating point values, OK? So the best way to do that is to actually divide every value by 255, yeah? Because our input values, they go from 0 to 255 in an image, yeah, at every pixel. Uh, we have a value between 0 to 255. So by dividing it by 255, in a way, we are converting that into a floating, uh, each pixel into a floating point uh, number. So the best way to do that is let's define another parameter called s. And uh, in Keras, we have a function called lambda. Uh, 
it's under layers i believe dot bda lambda and this is nothing but the lambda function in regular python you know in regular python instead of defining a function by using def you can actually use a lambda function to unwrap the function within that line right so the way you do that is l a m b d a i sometimes forget to put b but anyway lambda so for x and what do you want to do to each x x is nothing but some value right i want to divide divide each x by 255 so let's go ahead and divide by 255 that's it this is how i'm converting my inputs well actually work on inputs right so i need to do that and i'll change this to s i hope that makes sense so all i'm trying to do is first define my input layer but then i'm converting those values from integers into a floating point by dividing each pixel by 255 that's it okay this is just a lambda function and then uh, my c1 layer and then comes uh, another c1 right in between those let's actually add a dropout okay so c1 equals tf dot care jars keras and within that layers and inside the layer i have drop out and let's actually drop out 10 percent from rc1 and now i can define my p1 that's it okay and this is nothing but our max pooling so this is again keras dot layers dot x p o o l i n g 2d and let's do this two by two okay and uh, we apply this on c1 there you go so we just defined the first layer right there so if i can zoom out i don't know so this is exactly what we have defined right up there 128 by 128 by 3 is my input right there converted that into floating and then 16 16 so i defined uh one layer oh see it's always good to i forgot to define the second layer right there i only defined the first one so after dropout let me copy this and dump it over there okay the only thing I need to change here is this applies to C1. That's it. Okay. It's always good to check, verify what you're trying to do. Now it makes sense. So we have our C1 right there, uh, input, and then we dropped out between these two, and then C1, 128, 128. Okay. And then we came down to max pulling. So now we are at this position. So I'm not going to type entire thing while I'm... Uh, you know uh, as part of this video so let me go ahead and pause the video type the entire thing and then continue uh, and then continue for now uh, so just give me a few seconds i'm going to pause the video okay now time to resume so i just typed all of this and now we can actually uh, let me just this is the contraction path which means i'm going down and then here expansive path from u6 we will be going back up yeah so coming back down sorry let me do this coming back down and now we are uh, from u6 uh, we are going back up okay and we are concatenating these right here and then that part actually you can see right here so u6 we are concatenating u6 and c4 okay so which is obviously nothing but you have u6 first okay right there and then it adds c4 to u6 that's pretty much it Otherwise, everything is pretty much the same as uh, how we have defined up here, okay? And finally, uh, and fi uh, by the way, the conv2d transpose is exactly opposite to of conv2d, okay? This is this is upscaling, basically, instead of uh, downscaling. Now, uh, what else do we have? Uh, I think I explained pretty much everything, and let's actually look at a couple of things in the uh, down here, output layer. Yeah, so in the output layer, again, we use one right there and uh, uh, inputs and outputs are outputs and model.compile. My optimizer that I'm going to use is uh, Adam optimizer. There are other optimizers. Again, optimizer is nothing but it's a module that contains uh, uh, a lot of back propagation algorithms that can train our model. Okay, Adam is the one that's most common. There are the traditional ones called stochastic gradient descent. 
uh, SGD or there is another one called root mean squared propagation so you can use that or you can use add a grad add a delta these are the ones I can think of off my head okay but uh, Adam is the one that's used most often and last function we are since this is a binary classification that we are going to work with either it is a cell or not a cell right so I'm going to use binary cross entropy, which is a very good uh, loss function. Again, loss function is nothing but the optimizer is trying to minimize the loss function. Once it finds the minimum of the loss function, that's where it stops the iterations. Okay, so we're going to use binary cross entropy and we'll also use like accuracy metric to measure the model's performance after training. So that's it. And now let's go ahead and print the model summary. So I think this should run so let's go ahead and run this code and let me expand the right hand side because it's going to print the model summary on the right hand side and there you go okay so now we have uh, input layer 128 by 128 by 3 again let me bring this up here this is always a challenge to put everything together so you can see it in the video but let's uh, I hope that's fine Okay, so input layer 128, 128 by 3, 128, 128, 3 over there, and then the convolutional 2D, 128, 128, 16, 128, 16. There are 448. This is the total number of parameters in this layer. Uh, I'll, in fact, I'll, let me record another video talking about what basically this means you know what what do we mean by total trainable parameters or total parameters so let's save that for now okay let's park that topic now we did some dropouts right there and there is no training uh, there are no parameters when we are dropping out okay and the next convolutional layer 128 128 16 and then we have 2320 uh, parameters over there then we did max pooling and max pooling there are no trainable parameters and uh, let's just randomly pick something convolutional 2d 64 64 32 uh, 64 64 32 right there or c2 so you can just follow this all the way down okay so hopefully you should be able to follow this and you always need to do this sanity check always when you're designing a new uh, network okay obviously meticulously write down exactly what you expect at, at each every uh, each and every layer and when you print out the model does it make sense does it correspond with what you are trying to print out and finally down here it's gonna uh, when you do model dot summary it's going to show you the total parameters total trainable parameters some parameters are not trainable okay in this case all 1,941,105 parameters are all trainable that's incredible number of parameters that need to be trained okay so this is how we can actually define our network, uh, our uh, unit in uh, Keras. It's very easy, as you can see. Once you know exactly how the architecture looks like, you can go ahead and uh, and and uh, you know use this. Now, there are many ways of actually defining this network. Again, if you use uh, in Keras, there is a, a sequential. Uh, API I believe like in sequential operator if you use that then there is a slightly easier way of defining this okay then you just keep adding each layer the data from each layer to each other this is the way I like to do it so uh, but if you google search for a unit and uh, Python code or something or go to github you'll find like at least 10 different types 10 different ways that people try to uh, define this but pick the one that works best for you go ahead and modify it okay uh, if you want to save time Okay, in the next tutorial, I'm going to talk about, uh, like I just promised, uh, trainable parameters, uh, what these parameters are, and then continue this tutorial. So I hope you found this to be educational, useful. If so, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Let's meet in the next tutorial.